Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to make Glowforge earrings out of a variety of materials and I'm going to use the Glowforge Spark for all of these. So if you haven't seen the new Glowforge Spark, this might be the video you want to watch. Now this video is sponsored by Glowforge, however all projects and opinions are my own. The Glowforge Spark is the newest Glowforge and it is a smaller Glowforge machine. That means it's even more accessible for people that want to get started with laser crafting. So if you ever thought about getting started with laser crafting, be sure to take advantage of the Glowforge pre-sale. During the pre-sale period, the Glowforge Spark is only $5.99. After the pre-sale, it will only be $6.99. So either way, it is a very affordable laser. And yes, you can make earrings with it out of a variety of materials. So today I'm gonna to make earrings out of wood, leather, as well as acrylic, just to give you some ideas of different earring combinations that you can make. And I actually made a little stand for my earrings and I cut it with the Glowforge Spark as well, so stay tuned for a short video on that as well that will be coming soon to YouTube. So for now, let's make some earrings with the Glowforge Spark. So let's take a look at the material we're gonna use first. For these earrings, I'm gonna be using Glowforge Proof Grade materials. And earrings, I feel like, are a good way to show the versatility of the Glowforge Spark because there are so many different materials you can make them out of. So I'm gonna use the natural leather, like a light maple plywood, then a medium walnut hardboard, and then some acrylic. Now you can use acrylic in a variety of colors. However, the Glowforge Spark will not do things like clear acrylic, so you do need something that has a color. The good thing about the proof grade materials is that you can look on them, and if they say Glowforge Aura or Glowforge Spark on them, you can use them in the Spark machine. That indicates that the Spark will cut them. The other good thing about these is that my machine is going to read this QR code, and it is going to tell the machine exactly what settings to use to cut them, so I don't have to worry about any of that. If you're gonna use other materials for your earrings, make sure that they say they're laser compatible or laser ready before using them in your Glowforge Spark. And you might need to play with the material settings. The Glowforge community is a great place to get started with material settings of unknown materials. I have my Glowforge Spark set up and it is hooked to my air filter. Then I'm gonna to head to app.glowforge.com and choose a design. Now I'm using all designs that are right in the Glowforge app. You can upload your own designs as well. So I'm gonna start with this set of light plywood earrings. So I'm gonna click on it to add it to my screen. Now you can see it, as well as the inside of your Glowforge Spark. The next thing I'm gonna do is lift the lid and add the material to the Spark. Now I'm using a 12 by 12 sheet of plywood, so I'm gonna make sure that the QR code is where the camera can see it. My screen updates and you can see the inside of the Glowforge Spark, along with where the material is. The material also changed on the screen, so now it says light maple plywood. So the machine knows by reading that QR code through the camera exactly what material I'm using. Now I can see that these earrings are hanging off of this material. So this file was probably designed for a machine that cuts larger material. Let's go ahead and rotate these 90 degrees, move them, and now the entire thing will fit on my sheet of material within the Glowforge Spark. So you may find that some of the projects within the Glowforge app are designed for other machines, but you can often modify them to work with the Glowforge Spark. So now this is set up with just cut lines. So by clicking each of these layers, you can see that they are set to cut, and it is a proof grade material, so my settings are already set for me. So each of these are set to cut and a proof grade cut. So this is one example of just cutting earrings. So let's go ahead and send this to the Glowforge Spark and we'll click print to do that. The machine will start up and you can hear that on the camera. The machine and the air filter work via Bluetooth so both of those should start up at the same time. You can see on the screen that it does say my Glowforge Spark is connected to my air filter. You do want to make sure that the air filter is online before cutting. So now we can see with this material and this file, this is going to take one hour and 18 minutes to cut. You do want to be aware of this because you do want to stay by your Glowforge the entire time something cuts. 
just for safety reasons. So now we can press the button on the Glowforge Spark to start the cut. Once it's done cutting, wait until everything cools down. Wait until the app tells you that the print is done. Then you can open up the spark and you can start removing your pieces. So you can see that everything cut great. Now with these, there are gonna be some super small pieces. A lot of those might fall into the spark. You might wanna keep like a vacuum cleaner handy to vacuum those up. Once you remove these, you might have to push out some of the very, very small pieces with something like a weeding hook. They just kind of get stuck in there. It's not that they're not cut through. Then one of the other benefits of proof grade material is that there is a masking on both sides. So when it comes off, you might see that it looks like it has some burnt marks on it. Fortunately, that is on the masking. So I just have a piece of Gorilla Tape here and I'm just going to press it down. And the masking is on the front as well as the back. So once I press that down, I can peel this back and you can see the masking comes right off. And now this one looks much better. So in comparison, we have the one with the masking here and you can see those burnt marks. I remove the masking and it looks much, much better. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the masking from the rest of these. And then this is just a cut earring, right? So we just use cut lines. All of these are just cut, no engraving, no other types of cuts. Let's take a look at some other earring types made out of different materials perhaps, that use some of those additional features that you get with the Glowforge Spark. Here's an example of another set of earrings. So this has both cut and engraved line types. And this time I'm going to use acrylic. So I put my acrylic in my Glowforge Spark and you can see it on the screen. The camera read that QR code and it already has my material listed along with my settings. So the insides will be engraved and then it will cut around the outside as well as holes for the earring bindings. With the engrave, you can change the depth of the engraving. So I find that draft is the most shallow, SD a little deeper, and HD even deeper than that. So I am gonna leave it on draft and go with a light engraving on these. So my spark is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click print. These will take about 23 minutes. Then the final type of line is a score line. So I'm gonna make some earrings with a score line as well. And yes, I'm using a hardwood this time instead of a plywood or acrylic. I've already added the material to my Glowforge Spark. It reads the QR code and it has the material type. Then the purple lines are gonna be score lines and then the cut lines will be the outside as well as small holes for the jewelry findings. So now we can go ahead and click print. These will take about seven minutes to make. So I continued to cut and take the masking off several different materials. This is the acrylic that I used the engraving on. So you remove the masking from these in the same way. Gorilla tape does make it easier. However, you'll wanna get all of this masking off. So you can see how the outside is just coming off. Something like a scraper really work that Gorilla tape onto there and then start pulling it up. And just work until you can get all of this masking off. Now I did wanna note that for engraving or score lines, while the masking is still on, you can use something like a paint pen to get the color down into those lines. 
You do not have to, but that is one option for making the engraving or the score lines pop a little bit. Now, I did a variety of materials. So I did leather here with engraving, score lines on that wood. I did some acrylic with just cut lines. So you can mix and match materials and techniques to create whatever earrings you would like. So once I get this masking off here, we'll take a look at assembling the earrings. For each of these, I'm adding a jump ring as well as an earring hook. I'm just using pliers to add the jump ring, adding on the earring hook, and then closing that up. For earrings where I need a stud, I'm just using some jewelry glue to attach those to the back of the earring. So once all of these are assembled, my Glowforge earrings are complete. Now I'm not adding any paint or anything to the wood earrings, but you could. So you could paint them at this stage with the masking off and you could add colors to them. Now I did wanna note that on wood, the edge does turn a darker brown. So it will have a dark brown edge to it. However, this surface will be the original wood color. So I am super pleased with the way all of my earrings turned out from the ones that I just cut either out of wood or acrylic to those ones where I added engraving and score lines. Whatever you choose to do with your earrings, the Glowforge Spark is the machine to do that. I love making small projects like this with my Glowforge because I can get those super detailed, intricate cuts on them. And you can see some of the intricate cuts I was able to get with these earrings. Then I added some of my earrings to a custom earring holder because if you're gonna cut earrings with your Glowforge, you might as well cut something to organize them with as well. And I even added my logo to the top. So yes, you can upload things like pictures, logos, and even more. So now if you wanna learn more about the Glowforge Spark, I do have a full video on the Spark itself, including me getting out of the box, setting it up, using it for the first time, and a brief comparison between the Spark and the Aura. And I will link to that video in the description below this one. So head there if you wanna learn more about the Spark itself. If you're like, I'm ready to make some Glowforge earrings, any of the Glowforge machines will make these. I did use the Glowforge Spark for mine because it is so easy to use, especially for beginners. And I feel like earrings are a great beginner project as well because they are super simple to make and don't take a ton of time. So regardless of which Glowforge you have, be sure to give them a try. If you're just getting started with laser crafting, I highly recommend looking at the Glowforge Spark. It's easy to use, small and compact, and it's not as intimidating as a larger laser may be. You saw how easy it was in this video for me to cut a project like these earrings. And like I said, this is a great beginner-friendly project for anyone getting started with laser crafting. So grab your new laser and start making some Glowforge earrings because I know you're gonna love them. So now if you have any questions about anything we've covered, drop down in the comment section, ask away. If you liked this video and it helped you, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.